well, these are some stormy looking skies. And when I see this, I can tell that there is some instability in the lower levels. Maybe we should take a look at the sounding and get an idea what this looks like. Well, there you go. That's going to be a sounding for what you just saw. What we see here is a lot of moisture in the lower levels, dew points in the upper 50s and lower 60s, and there's a lack of any sort of capping all the way up to 700 millibars. Looks like the lapse rate is wet adiabatic. So this is going to be favorable for some shallow convection. We can also see that there is a lot of warm air in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere, and that's going to cut down a little bit on the Cape. And as you can see, the Cape is limited to about 500 to 1,000. Now, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to know that we've got a complex weather situation today. We've got a very rare winter weather event in southwest Texas coming up. And there is a lot of cold air spilling down through places like Chicago, Oklahoma City, and Dallas. So I think we should start with the thickness and pressure. And we're going to use tropical tidbits to kind of mix things up a little bit. So here's the chart. The first thing we see is the thermal bands. There's one right there. There's another down here. So these could be two separate systems. You can see there's not as much thermal banding right here. So that's the reason I think it could be two systems. Now the cold front through Mexico, that's coming way far south right there. And you can see back behind the front, some snow in the higher terrain. Places like Chihuahua and the Sierra Madre Occidental. So there's the front right there and the other front extending all the way north. Now the other system up north, I'm going to go something like that. And we can see there should be a warm front through Pennsylvania and New York. And with that strong warm air advection in Ontario, it's producing some snow. See those boxes being formed by the thickness and pressure. And on the other side, there's other boxes for the cold air advection. Kind of gives a checkerboard appearance right there. So all of that is cold air advection. So the surface map. This is what we have going on this afternoon. There's that frontal system there in Texas. I'm not so sure that's a warm front. It's probably more of a stationary front becoming a cold front. And then the main load appears to be down there in San Antonio with another system further back in Old Mexico. That's going to be southeast of Chihuahua. The back edge of the Canadian air runs from just south of the Big Bend to southwestern New Mexico, and you can see those northeast winds pouring in behind. Guadalupe Peak there with 27 and snow and 30 knot winds coming out of the northeast. And that snow is already developing at Guadalupe Peak over to Midland, and we're going to see that those conditions gradually deteriorate. Across the western U.S., high pressure, this is a big plateau high and it's a little bit deceptive. You can't really see the impact of that plateau high, but nighttime temperatures in the valleys well below minus 10 Fahrenheit in some areas. Here's what the map looked like around daybreak, and you can see those very cold temperatures there. Craig at minus 19, minus 13 in another valley location, and zero, Eagle, Aspen, and there's minus 8 there at Alamosa conditions right now, not much warmer. Five to nine degrees in the valleys, contrasting with almost 40 at Denver. And a lot of that trapped cold air, the radiational cooling, that drives the pressures up and keeps the high pressure in this area here. Out in the western U.S., a new frontal system coming together. I identified the triple point just off the coast there of northwestern California with a front running about like that. This is a weather system that's going to be coming together and heading in through California into Nevada. 
And as it approaches, the winds will be coming up in the higher elevations, well up above 50 to 60 knots in some areas in the higher elevations. And then gradually that cold air should sweep down through California. Out in Texas, we're going to see that winter system coming together. This here, these two systems, these are going to consolidate and deepen into a strong low pressure area near the Texas coast overnight. And we're going to see kind of a powerful bear clinic system coming together overnight and then gradually move up into the lower Mississippi River Valley. Behind it, the comma head, the deformation zone back in here, combined with some very strong warm air advection. That'll be pumping the moisture in, providing some lift. So we're going to see freezing rain in a lot of places in central Texas, and then quite a bit of snow all the way down to west Texas, where they're expecting as much as a foot and maybe some local accumulations more than that. I think the Fort Stockton Marathon area is going to be what's most heavily hit. And I'll show you those totals in a little bit. Well, not much to talk about out east. We got this weaker system tracking through the Great Lakes area. And I'm picking out two different air masses. This looks to be an intermediate cold air mass in Kentucky, Ohio, the Appalachians, dividing 50s from 70s down south and then further north a warm front dividing the 20s up in Ontario from these 40s and 50s. So this goes along with the theme of two separate systems and I think the triple point is right around Gary to South Bend, Indiana. And that'll continue heading east and the condition should deteriorate in the northeast later this evening. And then up north, let's take a look at that. Seems like we need some Canadian theme music. There's that old washed up occlusion. Not much to say about that, but there is still a lot of residual warm air along the Greenland coast. Thule at this hour, 9 degrees, so that's a little bit on the warm side. The axis of the Arctic air looks to be still in the Western high Arctic islands, minus 21, up there on Banks Island, and also some cold air along the north slope of Alaska. Now, one interesting thing going on in Alaska, let me show you the models. So, we're looking at the North Pacific here. There's Korea, here's Asia, Siberia, that's the north coast of Russia there. Then we have Alaska, there's the Aleutians, and then the west coast of the U.S. Okay, and then Hawaii down here. Guam is, uh, yeah, Guam is right there. Japan located right there in the Philippines right there. So we've got this very strong weather system off the coast of Japan. It's out over the ocean, but there's that front, and looks like that cold front extends all the way down to the Philippines. It's kind of surprising there. So yeah, cold air coming south and the warm front running about like that. Now you can see the central pressure 961 millibars during the midday hours right now. But watch what happens going into tonight and tomorrow. You can see that heading up towards the western Aleutians, towards Shemya, and the pressure is dropping 934 millibars, 928, and down to 924. That's pretty low. That's getting down to what we usually see during Category 4 hurricanes in the Gulf and the Atlantic. Now, you're not going to get those kinds of wind speeds due to the higher Coriolis force up at those northern latitudes, but it will certainly be stormy. 924 millibars, that's about 27.29 inches of mercury. And that's lower than the record in the U.S., which appears to be this 28.57. And that's going to be 967 millibars. Now, that's not unprecedented. The November 2014 Bering Sea cyclone was down to 920 millibars. 
You can see a pretty cool picture of it right there. And it had winds up to 80 miles an hour sustained in that system. So what we're looking at here is the midday conditions tomorrow. However, it is occluding the main cold front running about like that and the warm front, something like that. And then the occlusion wrapping around back into the system. So this is already on its way out and filling. And you can see the pressure starting to come up there, 927, 931, and gradually just drifts into the Bering Sea, and then it becomes pretty nondescript. But anyway, another thing that we notice is this train of cyclones approaching the western coast. So there's a couple right there, and we're going to see the west coast become active in the next couple weeks. Actually, in the next week or so. This is about the fourth or fifth. This is a system approaching the west coast, and that's going to be coupled with an atmospheric river. Let me show you that coming together. There's our three systems. And you can see how that big Bering Sea becomes decoupled from the moisture supply. But uh, we're going to focus on this area here going into Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And you can see this plume of moisture coming up into Oregon and Northern California. It's not a huge atmospheric river, but it is something. And another shot coming in for midweek into Central California. And then we got a few more lined up there, and this is the progression going into the first half of January, the 10th, 11th, 12th. So it looks like things will be getting a little active there on the West Coast. Returning to Texas, let's see what's going on with that situation. The cold front located about like that. You can see that pretty clearly in the plots, can't you? It's almost 80 degrees in Brenham, Texas, west of Houston. Got 75 there south of San Antonio and contrasting with 40s north of that front. And you can see Chihuahua right there reporting 36 degrees and a little bit of fog. So that front is going to go about like that. You can see Deming, New Mexico, windy northeast wind conditions. And that's going to be the backside of that Canadian air mass. It should pretty much stall at about le that location right there. So this is the preliminary setup. We've got a lot of cold air in the lower levels. Van Horn, Texas, 31 and snowing. Still rain at Fort Stockton, but snow coming down at Marfa. Let's take a look at the upper levels. Now here's the other factor in this whole system, the mid-level condition. So I have the 700 millibar temperatures and height. This is up at about 10,000 feet. You can see the core of that cold air right there in southeast Arizona, temperatures minus 10 Celsius at 700 millibars. And running that forward, we can see the cold pool moving out over the Big Bend area, Texas, crossing northern Mexico and then emerging in south Texas. Let me just show you what's in this cold pool. I'm going to go back to this evening. And I'm going to sample conditions in northern Mexico. That column has a very steep lapse rate. Pretty much wet adiabatic all the way up and very cold. The entire column below freezing. The tropopause right there at about 400, mil 400 millibars and the 500 millibar temperatures minus 27 Celsius. That's some very cold air. So at 700 millibars, the fronts are going to look something like that with an occlusion coming back into the core of that system there. Anyway, so the whole thing moves out, and uh, that kind of primes this area of West Texas for snowfall. You can see the whole column is below freezing. The dendritic growth zone located right at about that level there, and the whole column supports snow. So anyway, the whole thing is going to emerge northeast into Texas. 
Then we can see another shot of cold air trailing in right behind that. And there it is heading up into the northeast U.S. So we'll wrap this up looking at the WRF ARW. I like that model a lot. Uh, bring this up to the current time. We're about right there. You can see the front moving through Texas. And back in here, there's the deformation zone and the cold air aloft. Precip changing over to snow there. Now the other factor I forgot to point out is the 850 millibar warm air advection. Yeah, here you go. The 850 millibar fronts looking like that this morning and this evening. There's low pressure area right there and the cold front extending south. So this is an 850 millibar front and you can see that the warm air advection really starting to kick in across central Texas. And as we go into tomorrow morning, look at that. Look at all that warm air flowing up and over the front. 850 millibar low pressure area right there. 850 millibar front kind of back in here. And a lot of this indicates very strong lift in the lower levels. In fact, let me drop a skew T right around Waco tomorrow morning. And you can see that strong easterly flow right there at 850 near the top of the frontal zone. So that'll certainly support quite a bit of lift. And then going into tomorrow evening, 850 millibar low kind of moves northeast. That looks to be the fronts right there. There's the warm sector. And there is still warm air flowing up and around. That's the warm air conveyor belt coming in. In the lower levels near the surface, the cold air is filtering in from below. And all of this is keeping the column kind of cool except for a very thin layer at 850 millibars. And that will probably help support some of that freezing rain right there around Abilene. And there's a sounding right there at Abilene. You can see a little layer right there that is above freezing. So that's going to support snow melt. And then it's going to refreeze down here where the temperatures are below freezing. So this is a setup for freezing rain on this sounding, possibly mixed with some sleet. So anyway, it's all going to move out and there's the rest of the picture. Looks like with that secondary shot, not as much low-level dynamics involved. And we'll just mostly have the cold air filtering in behind it. So anyway, I thought some of you might find that interesting. Some of the same principles apply in the Northeast U.S. And to a certain extent, that's what we do see with those nor'easters when they move up off the coast of the Northeast U.S. Kind of a very similar progression in terms of the low-level and mid-level systems. So here's those snowfall totals. You can see those coming together there, the highest amounts around Fort Stockton, and some of the weaker amounts in the east part of Austin, eastern San Antonio, and just east of Fort Worth. And here's how the rest of it progresses overnight. Remember that warm air advection is setting up over the top of that front. You can see that freezing rain area developing near the nose of that warm air and spreading up into the Abilene area. And then on the back side, strong lift, setting up some convective bands out there in West Texas. I would not want to be on Interstate 10. Even I-20 would be kind of treacherous. And then with the main cold front emerging, we get uh, some... Thunderstorm shower bands moving across East Texas early tomorrow, and eventually that moves up into Louisiana. And then we get the dry slot filtering in the backside there. Still quite a bit of wraparound, a lot of deformation zone activity in Wichita Falls, Fort Worth, and Oklahoma City. So they're not quite out of the woods until later on Friday. So anyway, that's how that's coming together, and tomorrow we will focus on this system some more and try to cover a little bit more of how that will impact the eastern states. 
So that's all I got for today. Thank you for watching. I wanted to thank one of our supporters, KW, for increasing their pledge. That is much appreciated. Thank you for that. Anyway, we'll talk to you tomorrow and hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.